Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I am an AmeriCorps Interpretive Naturalist here at Deception Pass State Park. I would like to welcome everyone today to Cranberry Lake. We will be going on a journey back through time to see how Cranberry Lake has shaped the Deception Pass State Park that you all know and love today. Please keep in mind that all the areas we go on our journey today can be accessed here at the park at Cranberry Lake. Now, as I show you what the rest of this area looks like here, I would like you all to think about a time in the past spent at a natural area. I hope you are all able to recall a memory of a time spent enjoying nature. Our past can hold many incredible moments. The area here has an intriguing past. I invite you all to take a journey with me today as we see how the past of Cranberry Lake shaped the community, appearance, and popularity of Deception Pass State Park. On our journey back through time, we will be traveling to the early 1900s. I invite you all to count with me as we make our jump through time. On three, one, two, three. Welcome to the 1920s. We are at Cranberry Lake for the annual Farm Bureau Inter-Island Picnic. It is a warm summer day and the area is crowded with thousands of people. The swimming hole is filled with kids laughing and splashing in the water. People are laying on the warm green grass. There is a whack from a bat nearby where kids are playing ball on the lake shores. The smell of greasy fries wafts through the air and music from a local anacortes band is playing loudly in your ears. Nearby, a group has gathered where a pie eating contest is just about to begin. This event is a hub of activity and excitement. Have you ever heard of the inter-island picnic before? Well, if you have not, let me give you a little background. The Inter-Island Picnic, also known as the Picnic in the Park, or the Annual Farm Bureau Picnic, was started in 1919 by the Island County Farm Bureau to bring together Whitby Island and Fidalgo Island residents so that they could be better acquainted with one another. This happened before Deception Pass was even a state park. The first picnic in the park was a huge success and in subsequent years gathered people from all over surrounding areas, including Port Townsend, Mount Vernon, and Bellingham. The picnics ran from 1919 until at least 1935, where they gathered thousands of people to each year. The first few picnics were held at Cornet Bay before it was moved to the much-loved Cranberry Lake. The events included a pie-eating contest, a watermelon-eating contest, races, tug-of-war, high jump, broad jump, baseball throwing contests, bands, and education programs. And a little fun fact for all of you, at the picnic in 1930, Miss Manchester of Anacortes attempted to swim the Deception Pass. I cannot imagine trying to swim Deception Pass. Besides activities, the picnic in the park was known for their speeches. They attracted politicians and prominent figures. Some of the speeches even advocated for the area surrounding Deception Pass to become a state park. It was advocations such as this and other political activities that led to the government granting three military reserves to Washington State to become Deception Pass State Park. On April 17, 1922, Deception Pass was signed as a state park. In honor of the community that helped to advocate for it, the, De the state park was dedicated at the annual Inter-Island Picnic on July 20th, 1922. This cemented Whitby and Fidalgo Island together in a new way, a shared park between them. The picnics gathered thousands of people each year, making the park a super popular place. The picnics also created a community for the park. This community would play an important role in the creation of one of the most iconic elements of Deception Pass. Stretching between Whidbey and Fidalgo Island, this structure had an important role in connecting the communities. What do you think this structure might be? Let's head from the 1920s to the 1930s to find out more. 
go ahead and jump with me on three. One, two, three. Some of you may have said the deception in Canoe Pass Bridges. The picnic in the park was crucial to the creation of the bridges. We have jumped to 1935 and the bridges are officially opening. We are standing on the Deception and Canoe Pass Bridge as Representative Pearl Wanamaker cuts the ribbon to officially open the bridge. There is excitement in the air. Over 4,000 people have come out to see this event take place. With a snapping sound, the ribbon is cut and the bridge is open to traffic. The crowd now disperses to Cranberry Lake to celebrate the opening with an afternoon picnic full of food, music, and water sports. Life has changed forever for the island residents. For many people, the bridges are an iconic element of Deception Pass State Park and also an important travel route between the two islands. I'd like you all to take a moment and reflect back before 1935 and the creation of the bridges. How might people have traveled between the two islands? A lot of you may have thought about the fair. For 50 cents a car or 10 cents a person, you can cross the islands on the Deception Pass Ferry. The ferry journey could be time consuming and some people wanted a more easily accessible route between the islands. This led to people advocating for a bridge between the islands at the Inner Island Picnic. The Anacortes American newspaper wrote that the picnics were a crucial event in creating community and political support for the building of the Deception Pass Bridge. Not everyone was happy with the building of the bridges though. Some feared the change that the bridges might bring to their quiet island communities. Representative Pearl Wanamaker introduced a bill to build a bridge over Deception Canoe Pass. It was passed unanimously in the House, passed unanimously in the Senate, and then vetoed by the governor. Although the first try for the bridge was not met with success, the community at the Inner Island Picnic continued to advocate for the bridge and enabled new hope in the legislature. At the 1933 picnic, over 3,500 Whidbey and Fidalgo Island residents pledged their support for the bridge, and in 1934, construction had started. To the excitement of many and apprehension of some, less than a year later in 1935, on July 31st, the bridge was officially opened. At around the same time that the bridge was being advocated for, other changes were happening at Deception Pass State Park. Washington State Parks lost funding and in the midst of the Great Depression, the trails, roads, and structures fell into disarray. With the election of Franklin Roosevelt, there was a new program created to add more jobs that would help out national and state parks. Washington State Parks jumped at the opportunity to have this program come to their state parks. Between 1933 and 1938, this program helped to build Deception Pass State Park up and played a key role in its history. Do you know what this program is? Take a moment to think about what this program may be. We are going to jump now to 1938 to learn more. So go ahead and jump with me on three, one, two, three. Some of you may have guessed it, the program was the Civilian Conservation Corps. Imagine being a member of the Civilian Conservation Corps, getting on a train and leaving everything you have ever known behind, adjusting to a new place and lifestyle of outdoor work. Thunks fill your ears as nearby shovels hit the ground, spewing rocks and dirt in all directions. The sun shines down causing a beautiful reflection on a nearby lake as you work. You look around, some men are carefully placing rocks as they construct the walls of buildings, while others are working together to clear a new trail through the dense forests. You are a part of an important program at Deception Pass State Park. The Civilian Conservation Corps, also known as Roosevelt's Tree Army, was a program created during the Great Depression to give young men a job working on environmental projects. Deception Pass State Park was one of the areas that received its benefits, and here at Cranberry Lake was one of the areas that they chose to improve in the park. 
The CCC tore down old buildings at Cranberry Lake and replaced them with new ones created in a rustic fashion. At Cranberry Lake, they built a variety of structures, such as picnic shelters, a comfort station, and bathrooms. The comfort station was torn down, but the picnic shelters lived to tell the tale of their labor. These structures and all those at Deception Pass State Park help to increase the recreation and the popularity at Deception Pass. Let's head back to present day so we can see how these events have shaped the Deception Pass State Park that we all know and love today. Let's time travel one last time on the count of three. One, two, three. Today, people come from all over to visit Deception Pass State Park. This beautiful, serene lake that I am standing next to now is so much more than meets the eye. The community established in the 1920s and the picturesque buildings built in the 1930s were just stepping stones to the park's popularity today. I wonder what this park would have looked like had Cranberry Lake not been such a special place to the residents of Fidalgo and Island County and even those who came before. We may never know, but I encourage you to think about that and the connections that we have to the places we love. The past has made this park special. What can you do to continue its legacy and shape its future? On behalf of myself and everybody at Washington State Parks, Thank you for going on this journey through time with me to discover one small piece of history of one of Washington's most beloved state parks, Deception Pass State Park.